Hi, my name is Siti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. But today is going to be something special. We are going to be looking at a tool that is now available on Kickstarter and I've gotten my hands on the very first copy, Mojobot. Now, as it says on the box, Mojobot makes coding easy and fun. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to be unboxing this set and then we're going to have a look at exactly how it is going to make coding easy and fun for your students and how it compares and stacks up against other already established names. So let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now the first thing we'll do is we're going to open Mojobot. So let's go ahead and open up our box. Now once we're inside our box you will see there is a number of different items. Now we're going to get rid of this paper right here and then we see we have our bot we have a main console and this is where we're going to start coding then we have different blocks available and some cards so let's go ahead and take it out of the box I'm going to carefully open up this unit there we go now underneath you will see there are some puzzle pieces now these puzzle pieces they will all fit together to form the mat or the base where our mojo bot is going to navigate across. Now, already you can see that these look very different from other robots. They have little squares in the corners. Now these are used to keep the mojo bot straight and the mojo bot will make sure that it's always going the right way. So no more bots that sort of steer off to the left or the right. Using these squares, the mojo bot will correct its path. So that is our base. Now let's get rid of this box. There we go. And now all that's left is to have a look at what's inside and available to the public. Now we have our Mojo bot. This is our actual robot. Now the robot has a proximity sensor, a light sensor, a sound sensor. At the bottom there is a magnet that is going to allow you to pick up objects and place them back down. We have our wheels for navigation and then here we have our sensors that are going to track our squares. Now these will make sure that our mojo bot moves in a straight line. Now what else do we have in our box? We have some cards. Now these are all part of an adventure game and more on that later. Let's put those cards to the side. Here we have some chips. Now these chips are going to be different objects that can be picked up by our mojo bot. So let's just quickly arrange these chips in front of us. So let's just quickly arrange some of these chips. And here we go, we've got some flowers, oranges, eggs, etc, etc. As you can see, there are lots of different chips available. Now, once you start the adventure game, and more about that later, you will be challenged to pick up certain objects and then drop them off in different areas. For example, we can pick something up from the ice cream shop, we are going to have to navigate to the space center and then we drop it off at the space center. So this is all part of our coding journey. Now let's have a look at the actual coding blocks. Now the coding blocks are here. There we go. Now I'm going to open this and you can see we have forward, we've got some right turns, but what you will see instantly is that these coding blocks all have a little opening down below. And that's because the Mojo bot allows you to not just code a forward move, but also specify how many squares you'd like to move. So if I place a number three inside my forward block, I will now move forward three steps. This is great when you're trying to challenge your students. Now you can see we've got pick up, put down, we've got lights, we can turn the lights on and off. We can record some sound, we can play sound, and we can even have a number of emotions. Now where do we place those blocks? Well, they are placed on our console. Now this is our main console, and the main console is going to hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks. However, as you can see on the side, this is extendable. So if you have multiple consoles, you can simply click on an extension console. The same goes for downwards. If you see down here, we have another connection point. This is going to allow you to now connect a function board. It means extending your code to the right. And if you go downwards, you will have sub functions. But more about that when we're opening up our extension kit. And then here we have our adventure book. Now this is adventure book one. This is part of our base set. And this is the set that's available on Kickstarter right now. 
Now here you can see we can program our Mojo bot and it gives you a full explanation and step-by-step -step instructions for your students on how to code. And then here the adventure begins. So as you can see, it says the adventure starts here. Let's roll together and it starts with a story. So the story starts going and then there is a task. So here it's telling us to start home move north and go towards our cafe. So that's our very first challenge. Now this challenge is going to show you exactly which tags to use and then how to place them on your console. Now the Mojo bots and the console are both rechargeable and you can see the cables are included in the base pack so we can recharge these. And if you have multiple players and you're playing the adventure game, then we have these little placeholders for multiple players. So you can move the Mojo bot and you can have multiple players all using a single Mojo bot using these players or chess pieces. So let's go ahead and dive into actually coding and playing with our Mojo bot. So first things first, let's build up our playing field. Now, once you've built up your map and you have Mojo bots and the console connected, you can get started on coding. Now the way coding works with MojoBot is you will be using these special tags. Now these are coding tags and they can be placed into the console. There are eight slots available and as you can see I'm placing a forward tag into my console. Now at the moment this is still showing me an orange light and the reason for that is because what makes MojoBot unique is that it uses two perimeters. It is not only using forward, it is also asking you how many steps forward. So I'm going to define that now by putting a number two perimeter inside my forward tag. This now turns green and as soon as I press go, you will see my Mojo bot is navigating the map two steps forward. Now the reason Mojo bot was making a little bit of a movement before moving forward is because it is actually looking for these squares. Now those squares help Mojo bot navigate the map and they make sure it doesn't steer off to the left or right. So again, we can add code to this. So let's move MojoBot back to the sports complex and let's add a second tag. We are going to turn left. Now we're going to turn left only once and then we're going to move forward one more time. So let's say move forward one. So what my code looks like now is forward two, turn left one and then forward one. And let's see what happens when I send this to the Mojo bot. It's going to make sure it's straight and it's going to start moving. Forward one, forward two, turn left and forward one. A nice little beep at the end to signify that our code has been completed. And this way you can add many more statements. Now, in addition to your standard movement blocks, MojoBot also has a number of extra special blocks. We can record sounds, we can play back these sounds. We can also display a number of emotions, such as sad and happy. And these emotions will show up on the front of our MojoBot. We can change the light color at the top. Anything is possible using these coding tags. Now you will have noticed that I've only got eight slots available and that's where our extension set will come in. So your extension set will allow you to extend these eight coding slots into 16 coding slots. So let me just quickly grab my extension kit and then I will show you exactly what's available inside the extension. So here I have my extension kit. Now, as you can see, the extension kit is a much smaller box and let's go ahead and open this box together. Inside the box, what we will find is another console. Now what's special is that this box does not contain a MojoBot. It is an extension, it is a cheaper box, and what it does give us is a number of extra coding blocks. As you can see, we have many more blocks that can be used. There are some wait statements, we have repeat until and loops, and we also have subroutines. Now these subroutines will be done by clicking on our add-on console. Now let's have a look at how that works. So I have my box up there. I have my original console down here and you will see there is a connector at the side. This connector can either flip to the side or up. Now I'm going to keep it pointing leftwards because what I can do now is connect these two together 
and I now have 16 statements that can be coded into my console. However, sometimes we want to code subroutines rather than coding longer sequences. So what we do then is we simply take off the add-on, turn this upwards and we connect down the bottom. Connect the two together and you now have an add-on. Now let's see what this does. I'm going to leave it right here. Now that coding block is a purple block and it looks like this. It says subroutine A set A and that's how I start my subroutine. Now as you can see it immediately turns green and that means that from now on I can call this routine. So let's move all these movement blocks into my subroutine. There we go. So my subroutine now contains forward two steps, turn left one, forward one. And I can now call my subroutine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a call to the top of my console. Now let's see what that looks like in action. So let's get rid of this box. Let's put Mojobot back onto our map. There we go. And let's send this statement to Mojobot. He is going to now execute the subroutine. It's moving two steps forward. It's going to turn left and it's going to move forward. This means that you can call the same routine over and over again. So let's do that. So what I can do is I can add a second subroutine and a third subroutine. So we're going to execute subroutine A, which has forward two, left turn one, forward one, and we're going to execute it three times. So let's do that now. Let's return to the sports complex and let's simply tap go. We're executing it for the first time. There we go. We're going to go forward once forward a second time and as you can see it now executes the second subroutine so again going to go forward twice turn left and then it keeps moving it is now in the middle of the second subroutine and the third subroutine starts running there is nice little LED indicators on the consoles so your students can follow along and see exactly where the MojoBot is and there we go. So Mojobot, a great way of teaching programming to very young students. Now you might think, is that all there is to Mojobot? Is it coding? And well, actually you can do even more because Mojobot not only has the ability to read and interpret code that's sent to it, you can also use its sensors. So it has a proximity sensor and that sensor will allow to turn left or right when an obstacle is in front of him. We also have a sound sensor, so you can hear the sounds in the room, whether they're loud or soft. And there are some light sensors as well. Now at the bottom, you will notice that there are two more sensors down here, and these sensors are used for tokens. Now tokens can be picked up and dropped off in a different square. And these round tokens can be placed anywhere on the map, and at the moment I have a pizza token. I'm going to place this on the train station. Now what that means is as soon as he moves forward, he's going to do the pickup statement, which means that he's going to pick up that token. Then he's going to move forward one more time. He's going to put down our pizza, he's going to turn left and move forward twice. So let's see what that looks like. Now I'm going to remove the add-on console because it is not required at this time. And we're going to press go. He's going to move forward once. It recognizes the token and picks it up. It moves forward one more time, puts it down, turns left and moves forward again. So again, this adds an extra layer to coding and it gives your students the opportunity to not only code movements, but also very interesting actions. And it opens up many possibilities for storytelling or even more complex activities in class. So hopefully you have seen just how useful MojoBot can be in your classrooms and how it can really help you teach coding concepts and any other topic to your students in class. Now I've really enjoyed using MojoBot and the students have as well. So I definitely will be using it very often. Now, where can you find MojoBot? Well, if you go down to the description below, you'll see a link to a Kickstarter. Because at the moment, MojoBot is not available in shops. It is available on Kickstarter, and they are looking to launch this product around July. 
Now at the moment they have a huge discount going where they are only asking 130 US dollars instead of the 200 dollars that it will eventually end up costing. Now as you can see, unlike some Kickstarters, this product is ready to be shipped out. Now, there's still a couple of months left between now and when they're actually shipping out the Mojobots. So I'm very excited to see what else they are going to bring to the table, what else they're going to be adding to Mojobots. Now, this was my review, my personal review of Mojobot. I am definitely liking this product. And if you do decide to purchase a Mojobot, as soon as you get your hands on it, let me know in the comment section below what you think of it. Have you enjoyed it? And what would you like to see added to the Mojobot? Now, I know for a fact that the developers of the Mojobot watch this channel. So let us know in the comment section below, what do you like about Mojobot? What would you like to see added? And are there any features that you feel are lacking? Because as they are reading those comment sections and we still have a number of months to go before they are shipped out, this is our opportunity to give them our feedback. All in all, I love this product and I would definitely recommend you looking into it. I hope you found this product review helpful. And if you would like to see more product reviews like this, let me know in the comment section below and I will make sure to do just that. Now, all that's left for me to ask you is to subscribe, hit that bell notification and share this video out on all your social media. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. This was another flipped classroom tutorial.